In this video, we're gonna talk about the seven downfalls of Jesse Livermore. Great trader, but some downfalls. Let's check it out. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. If you haven't seen it, I've got it here. Great book, go and check it out, all about the life of Jesse Livermore. If you've watched my videos before, you're gonna know that I really, really love this book. Well worth a read. If you haven't seen my videos before, good time to subscribe to the channel. Anyway guys, Jesse Livermore, he's been put on a pedestal as a great, great trader and he's done some great things, he's made an awful lot of money. However, you know, when we look at the book and we read into it, there's a lot of things that are glossed over or he does share a lot of his kind of uh, faults as a trader and ultimately you know what happened to him we'll talk about that in a second so let's analyze let's not, not just look at the good stuff always look at the good stuff we also talk about quotes and things let's for all of us to learn let's analyze some of the downfalls that Jesse Livermore had or appeared to had based on the reminiscence of a stock operator book and the other book that he's done which the name escapes me at the moment so the first one is letting losers run you know that was something that he did several times in his career and it damaged him badly you know those were the times when he had those big big drawdowns he would let losers run yes he kind of it seemed to be a demon he was working within his own mind you know he talked about a lot in the book we talked about taking off um, a winning trade and letting a loser run which is you know kind of the worst possible thing that he could have done in his situation at the time and this is the sort of thing that creeps into modern day trading as well, guys. You know, we have the tendency to let losers run if we're not careful. And that may not just be on a trade level, intraday day level or a swing trade level. You might be looking at this saying, you know what, I always use my stop. That could also apply to letting losers run in terms of how many losers you're going to do. Are you in a losing strategy? Are you losing as a trader over this period of time and you're letting it carry on and on? You know, at some point you have to stop whether that's the trade, whether that's the sequence of trades, whether it's the strategy, something has to stop and, and be readjusted. So letting losers run, that was one thing that caught him out uh, very often and he talked about it often in the book as well, which is why we get such valuable lessons from it. So number one uh, is, is that. Number two, over trading. He had a tendency, like all of us, to enjoy the act of trading and be, and often he would trade for the sake of trading. One of the things actually he mentioned was, you know, the money I made was sitting on my hands. It was not being involved in the markets. It was either sitting on my hands, waiting for the opportunity or letting the trade mature and pay me for being right. And again, something that we must kind of learn from that. And you probably learn from yourself, from your own experiences. That is true. You're waiting for the right opportunity. You strike and then that's it. Your job is done. All you've got to do now is ride the wave as far as your profit target or, or whatever your exit strategy may be. Meddling with the trade, you know, trying to play in and out or you're trading something else for the sake of it, looking for another opportunity. You know, that's not really where the money is and the money lies in that. And he, he made a really big statement about that. And it's obviously because uh, it was something that really plagued him from time to time. And he recognized that, hey, you know, if I can just cap this over trading, then, you know, it's going to be way better for me. Okay, um, number three, following tips. So he did this a couple of times and, you know, I can't say something I've ever done. Maybe it's something you've done, but I know a lot of people who do. Someone rings up or says, hey, you know, I've got a really good thing. I think wheat's going higher. I think this stock's going higher. Whatever that may be, whether it's because of an analysis, whether they're pretending they've got some sort of, sort of information that no one else has got or they've, they've done some analysis that no one else has got, whatever it may be, you know, it, it never really works out because even if you went into that trade, uh, based on this person who you think has got, has got some information or you think is a good trader, whatever it may be, you, you're never going to have the same feeling for the trade as they have the same conviction that you need to hold the trade. You have to obviously come out when they come out and when times get tough and get tricky, let's say you get a bit of drawdown and they're confident in the trade for whatever reason, you're going to want to come out of it. So over time, you're never going to get that same results that you would if you had the same conviction yourself. You're in the trade, it was going away, pulling back, you were still comfortable with it, that kind of thing. Or you had, you know, initially went against you, but you stayed in it because you thought it was right. Whereas if you had a tip, you might just come out and think the guy's wrong. It just never works. You know, we could go into all these sort of permutations, but it just never works. And something he mentioned a couple of times is following tips, you know, wild tips from uh, I think a guy was called Percy or whatever. Someone can correct me in the, in the comment section below. But again, he made a comment about that and he said, hey, you know what, I shouldn't have done it. I should have just stuck to my guns and not got involved in it. So he recognized his fault and, and we can learn from that in the book as well. Number four, risk of ruin. So many times he was you know, worth billions basically in money now. 
are, are then worth you know zero million zero billion zero he had that cycle of just up and down up and down so you know this this kind of really ties into number five actually is position sizing yes you obviously get the gains in the account size by having that increased position size you're not going to make millions from a small account with a small position size at some point you have to stick your chips on the table to get that increase in wealth but that does come double-edged sword of course the risk of ruin comes there if he's up several million whatever it was in, in, in that day money and he's still pushing he's still pushing uh, and he's being aggressive and he's looking for those multiple multiple percentage returns all the time uh hundreds of percent return thousand percent returns every time should i say you have got the chance of ruin just mathematically it is so if you have a couple of bad trades and you're in full full steam on every single trade you know a small string of losers wipes you out and this is what jesse livermore found and you know whilst he found some success with it you know either you you step back and scale back your operation a little bit and, and kind of build on that slowly or if you're going to swing for the fences again you know you've got to be prepared to, to kind of strike out so that was something that that really uh, i would i would hope that most of us don't have risk of ruin because obviously if you're out of the game you've got no capital you can't trade um so that's the most important thing to protect you know mental capital and obviously financial capital and we'll talk about mental capital in, in a second uh, number six was discipline i think it's just a generic thing that for all of us guys you know it's discipline of, of focusing on the trading plan and, and, and these all kind of come in under the discipline umbrella really don't they you know stepping outside doing too much position sizing and he recognized that sometimes sometimes it worked for him sometimes it didn't he recognized that he, he would be suckered into a, a tip he would kind of over trade he would let a loser run it comes into the whole thing and and actually in the book he mentions a lot here so he recognizes just like us today traders you know struggling with with certain aspects and making move forwards and, and steps back and all that kind of stuff he recognized what he was doing he recognized these things were generally a discipline issue for him and so you know put it in a broad umbrella of discipline uh you know you could say yes he struggled with discipline but a lot of traders do a lot of traders do especially when you're kind of swinging uh, for these big wins that you got and the last one guys i think this is the most important one is his mental risk of ruin um, if you haven't read the book, I kind of won't spoil it for you. And she doesn't really mention it in the book what happened to him, but uh, probably common knowledge really that he ultimately ended up killing himself, uh, which kind of, to me, you know, is glossed over so much. Everyone puts him on a pedestal and says, oh, he's so great because he made all this money, but there's not really any point in it, is there, if you're not here to uh, enjoy it. And the ups and downs for him must have been so challenging that, you know, ultimately that's that's what he did. So that's really the big thing you've got to watch out for nothing is worth that obviously you know i don't need to state the obvious guys but you know all this wealth and, and swinging and, and trading journeys no point in it if you end of it you're just mentally drained completely so you know why we always talk about moderate doing things in moderation um you know if you're if you're making some money you take a step back if you're losing some money take a step back it's having that balance and yes maybe there's an underlying issue elsewhere in his life which is not talked about too much in the books fine but as we know, trading can exaggerate all those things. It can add, exaggerate all your emotions, good and bad. And if those swings are happening constantly, and I guess I haven't actually looked too much into the whole uh, reason and why, but I, I, I kind of assume that making billions, losing billions, making billions, losing billions, it was just enough for him to say, you know what, uh, I've had enough. So being cautious of your mental capital, I guess, is the best way to put this across. Financial capital, yes, we need to be careful of that, only risking it when we believe we've got an opportunity or when we believe uh, there's a good chance of us making money back on it. The same with the mental capital, because you know, that can run out too. You know, we don't want to be constantly, constantly, you know, drawing down on it because ultimately we'll run out. So I, I mean, that's a bit extreme a situation there, but in terms of maybe quitting trading because you can't take the stress of it or whatever it may be. So you know, doing it in bursts, recognizing that, you know, we're not, we're not robots. So we do have these emotional swings back and forth and, 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 and putting that together with the mental capital and the financial capital and using that kind of balance to move forward without, you know, expleting or depleting one, should I say, uh, more than the other or even either of them. We don't want either of them to be depleted, really. So anyway, that's uh, seven downfalls of Jesse Livermore. Uh, pretty standard stuff in terms of what we, we're doing now and what we're struggling with now as traders, all of us, it's the same lessons even it was all that years ago. So something to be learned from it, even though he did very, very many good things, very, very useful book. Again, Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, check it out. This is well used and well thumbed. Uh, copy of it it's loads of lessons in there loads of good things to be taken from it but also you know look at the things he didn't do so well so we can avoid them that's how we learn we look at the good and the bad try and avoid the bad 
uh, try and push towards the good to become better traders. All right, guys, thumbs up if you like this kind of stuff. Comments in the comments section below. As always, good trading. Take care. Keep the risk managed, both financial and mental. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.